We're now ready to talk about aerodynamic force components. And uh, just as a quick review, we've talked here about this, uh, the aerodynamic coordinate system transformation. So we have a body fixed coordinate system, a stability coordinate system, and a wind coordinate system. So that's the X sub S and X sub W for stability and wind. And then the B is for body fixed coordinate. And uh, just as a reminder, so the, the uh, body fixed is, is uh, attached to the aircraft. So we've got XB, uh, YB and ZB here and uh, we rotate that by the angle of attack here about the the uh, Y axis okay to get to the stability uh, coordinate system so that's a, a, a rotation of alpha uh, so that means that the X and the Z coordinates both rotate to get to the stability coordinate system but the Y coordinate is the same in the body fixed and the stability coordinate system and then um, and then to get to the wind fix coordinate system, we rotate about the Z stability coordinate system here by beta. And so that's a rotation out of plane here for that uh, for the X vector. So we go from X stability to X wind by beta. And uh, we also rotate the, the Y vector there uh, because it's a rotation about the Z axis here. Uh, the Y coordinate gets rotated by uh, beta as well. Um, but the the uh, stability and wind coordinates are the same uh, for the z-axis. Okay, so um, uh, I've tried to fit a lot of information on the screen here. Basically, now we're going to talk about the forces in each of these directions. So, uh, so for example, we have a name for the force in the x direction uh, for the body fix, the stability, and the wind. We have uh, names for the the forces in the z direction and forces in the y direction. These are just traditional names that have been applied to um, to these different forces. Okay, so let's just start here at the top. Um, so uh, so we're going to start with the body fixed coordinate system. The force in the x direction, and actually it's opposite the x direction, so it's in the negative x direction, is called the axial force. And we call that, or we, we usually use an A to denote that. So that's the force in this direction. That's an axial force. Uh, the side force in the y direction here is in the in the y direction of the uh, body fixed coordinate system we just call that a side force and so uh, so this force right here would be uh, capital y and then we have a normal force uh, in the opposite of the z direction okay so in the opposite of the body fixed z direction that's what we call the normal force all right so if we had um, if we had forces in the stability coordinate system we could use sines and cosines of the angle of attack to get uh, back these forces, the axial side and normal force in the body fixed coordinate system. And, uh, and finally, if we had forces uh, in the wind coordinate system, then we can use sines and cosines of alpha and beta to get it back to, the, uh, to a force in the body fixed coordinate system. Okay, so for each of these tables, what we're doing is we're, we're choosing one coordinate system. Uh, we're focusing on the names and the definitions of, of that uh, coordinate system and then how to get those forces if you have uh, forces in the other uh, coordinate systems, so the stability or the wind, for example, here. Okay, so let's look at this next one. Um, these are the force components in the stability coordinate system. And uh, so we've got a force in the uh, opposite of the XS direction, and that's what we call drag in the stability coordinate system. So let's put this in green. Uh, so this is going to be, uh, so that's drag, and we subscript that with an S because it's the drag in the stability coordinate system. We're going to find that we have a drag in the wind coordinate system as well. Okay, so that's why it's got a subscript on it. Uh, the side force is the same, right? So the side force in the body fixed and the stability are the same, so that's still called Y. And then finally, uh, the force in the opposite of the Z stability direction is called lift. So... Uh, so that's uh, in this direction here. I, I didn't quite draw that correctly. Let me try to line that up a little bit better. Okay, so that uh, that is in the opposite direction of this vector here, which is the Z stability uh, axis. And the force in the opposite direction there is what we call lift, okay? And again, if you had uh, forces in the body fixed coordinate system, for example, if you had axial normal Y, uh, if you have those forces, you can use sines and cosines of alpha to figure out what the drag, uh, side force, and lift are in the stability coordinate system. 
And then finally, if you had information from the wind coordinate system, uh, you can use uh, the sines and cosine of beta to get to the stability coordinate system. Okay, and then finally, uh, let's look at the wind coordinate system here. So we have uh, three forces again in the wind coordinate system. These are called drag, side, and lift forces. Okay, so let's put these in red. Okay, so, um, so drag is in the opposite direction of x, w. So we're going to come from this vector here, and we're going to call that drag. Um, and then the side force is in the yw direction here, so we're going to call that capital S. And then lift is uh, actually in the same, uh, because this vector we've rotated by beta to get from stability to, uh, to the wind coordinate system, it's actually in the exact same uh, coordinate system there, so that is also lift, okay? So, so lift is the same in the stability or the or the wind coordinate system. So we didn't need to subscript it because we use a capital L there to denote both of those, and those are equivalent. So uh, you can see here from stability, it's the same as L. Okay, so again, if we had uh, body fixed forces, we can use sines and cosines of alpha and beta to get the forces in the, um, in the uh, uh, wind coordinate system here, drag, side, force, and lift. And, uh, and finally, if we had forces in the stability coordinate system, we could use this transformation here to get it into the uh, wind coordinate system. Okay, so this these tables here should give you all the information you need to go between coordinate systems. And each of these is just a rotation matrix, basically, you know, and I, I've worked out the math here so that uh, so it's a little bit simplified. So you just plug these in directly. And the previous videos should, uh, from those, you should understand how those rotation matrices work. You know, if we have a, a vector in one coordinate system, how do we get that vector in, in components of a different coordinate system? And so, um, uh, anyway, that should be clear to you based off of those previous videos. But this, these tables here basically summarize how to move forces from one aerodynamic coordinate system to another coordinate system. Now, uh, one thing I want to point out is that um, uh, drag is just a little bit... Uh, 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 confusing in the literature. So some people, uh, in some books that, or, or publications, they'll say that the stability, the drag and the stability coordinate system, they denote that as D, and then they put a sub W here to denote drag in the wind coordinate system. But uh, I've chosen to use uh, uh, to use the convention where we actually call the drag uh, in the wind coordinate system the true drag, and that's because drag technically is the force in the opposite direction that you're traveling. And so uh, this is, uh, so the wind coordinate system is the direction that you're traveling relative to the surrounding air. And so the drag is the force opposite of that. And so I've called, uh, I have not subscripted that drag. I'm calling that the true drag. And then although we call the drag in the stability coordinate system, we still call it drag. Uh, we subscript it in the mathematics here with S and you can see that appearing uh, in a few places here. Uh, so we, we subscript it to no denote that that's the drag in the stability coordinate system, not the drag in the wind coordinate system. Okay, so so that's something you'll just have to be aware of as you look at other literature and, and books and things that that's treated somewhat differently uh, in different books.